Okay, um, I'm not really going to run through very much of part A here. Suffice to say, a decent diagram and using energy in, energy out, where I've set the potential energy equal to the kinetic energy uh, as it reaches the natural length uh, will suffice. You could also use the SUVAT equations here as it is in free fall until the natural length is reached. Okay, on to part B, the maximum distance and that the object actually falls. And there are a couple of alternative approaches to this part. I've drawn a diagram down with the uh, necessary information on, as shown. And you'll notice in uh, my case, I've called the unknown length D the distance between the natural length and the lowest point it falls. And I've put the potential energy there to be zero. And I've decided to solve this. Again, just using uh, simple energy considerations. The alternative would have been to um, model the motion um, beyond uh, natural length as simple harmonic motion. That wouldn't have been particularly difficult either. Okay, so for me, energy in, energy out. Uh, simply put in the values here. Potential energy is equal to the elastic potential energy at the lowest point. That will lead me to a quadratic, as shown. Fairly big coefficients in there. Um, use the quadratic formula. I dare say I just used a, a very quick app to solve that. It gave me these two values. Uh, obviously I want D to be the positive value. Adding that onto 8 gives me a distance of 10.388, which is 10.4 to 3 significant figures. So that's part A and B done. Now onto the part that was actually asked about, which is part C. So I'm going to have to consider to find the total time until the lowest point is reached, both uh, free fall and also part of the motion which takes place uh, with simple harmonic motion, so to speak. So there's several things I need to do. The first thing is to find out where the equilibrium position is, uh, and really that's just using Newton's second law, where T just stands for the tension at equi equilibrium. Uh, throwing in the values gives me that the uh, extension beyond the natural length to the equilibrium position is 7g over 250. So as I say, Newton's second law and Hooke's law combined to give me that value. Next then is a diagram um, which shows the various distances uh, that I know. And if I put together the numbers I have, uh, you'll notice that I've managed to find out what the uh, amplitude is going to be. So essentially I've used the work from the previous part which was how far it fell in total um, and I, I, I've managed to uh, as I say come up with this answer here which is correct as far as I can see. Uh, have a think about that and make sure you're happy. It's really just a case of subtracting uh, the correct numbers. Now um, for simple harmonic motion I need to know what the value of W is so I'm just going to have a look at um, the general case, i.e. when the uh, object is at a displacement of x uh, from the equilibrium position I'm taking downwards as positive, so I have 70g minus t equals 70x dot dot, it's just Newton's second law, and now I'm just going to put the tension in using, uh, using Hooke's law. But of course, um, for Hooke's law, the uh, overall extension will be the 7g over 250 plus this additional distance of x, i.e. the distance beyond the natural length. So it looks something like this. And if I then expand out uh, the left-hand side, it looks like this. Now you can check if you, if you need to, but hopefully you can see that the first two terms there will cancel out. And in fact, if you have a think about how we uh, found that value uh, for e in the first place, then it should be fairly obvious that that's going to give you the weight of the object. Anyway, work it out if needs be. They will cancel, and so I'm now left with the following, so I know what W is equal to. OK, it's time now to start putting the pieces together to find the total time. So we have the freefall time, which is just a SUVAT equation. Um, putting in the correct values will give you this 4 divided by the root of 9.8, if I was going to leave it as a third, I'd tidy that up, but at the end of the day, I actually want the decimal answer. So the final job then is to find out 
part on the simple harmonic motion part takes. Now, you could use um, a, an equation for the displacement involving a sine wave or a cosine wave, whatever you prefer. Uh, however, I, I prefer to use this associated circle, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to look at this and say, um, as my object falls from uh, essentially the natural length down to the amplitude, it will be moving with simple harmonic motion because after the natural length, of course, the uh, the string or spring, the string or the rope is under tension. So the time that it takes to do that will be the same as the part I've marked. Uh, on for a particle, associated particle moving on the circumference of a circle as I've marked in black. So my job is to find out that angle theta. Again, a very, very simple bit of trigonometry gives me that theta will be equal to 180 minus the inverse cos of alpha, uh, which uh, in this particular case will be uh, as shown. Sorry, um, 180 minus alpha, where alpha is the inverse cos as shown, and that gives me 97.4595. I put it in brackets because when I did this on the calculator I just used the memory function to keep it all as accurate as possible. So therefore the SHM time will be that over 360 times by the periodic time which is 2 pi over W and that gave me this time here as you can see and I'm now in a position to find the total time uh, which is simply the addition of the two parts we found and at the end of all that, it gives us 1.56 seconds when rounded to three significant figures. Uh, watch it again if needs be. Uh, and as I say, follow the method through as you're working.